Hello everyone. Welcome to the Harry Edwards Healing Minute, wherever you are, whatever time of the day, whether it's now live or later on on catch up. You're listening to some music at the moment by Stuart Jones and it's called Heavenly Cleansing. I'll just wait a little longer for people to join in. The picture you are looking at at the moment is one of the um, drawings made in a book called Spirit Stories for Children and it was written by Olive Burton back in the 1950s and it'll be part of the stories that I'll be reading later. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bev. I'm sitting in for Doreen this morning as she is leading the um, Sunday service actually live at the um, sanctuary this afternoon at two o'clock. So if you can join her and George, that would be lovely. It won't be on Zoom or um, Facebook, unfortunately, at this time. So good morning everybody. So make yourself comfortable, relax and if you wish and it's safe to do so, close your eyes. Be aware of your breath, in with the new and out with the old. Focus your attention on your breathing. Breathe slowly and deeply. Clear your mind of any cares and worries, unwanted thoughts and allow them to fade away. Allow your body to release and let go of any negative thoughts and tension. Allow your mind to become still and quiet. You are centred and calm. Now imagine yourself anchoring to Mother Earth through the soles of your feet, like the roots of a tree, reaching a pink pool of love and light. Feel yourself becoming still and centred and the relaxation beginning to wash over the whole of your body, in your toes, your feet, ankles and legs. Washing over your knees, thighs and hips. Feel that wave of relaxation continue to move up your body, into your back and rising up your spine into all the muscles of your abdomen and chest. Becoming loose and relaxed and free of any tightness. Allow the relaxation to spread into your shoulders, your arms, all the way to your hands and fingertips, then up to your neck and face. Allow your head to rest comfortably. Now feel the jaw muscles relax with all the tiny muscles in and around your eyes. Feel a softness over your face. Now from the top of your head, down to your toes, See your whole body and surrounding energy fields bathed in a pure, healing white light. In your mind's eye, see yourself walking in a forest or woodland. The trees are tall. It is a warm, sunny day with a slight breeze. The sunshine filters through the branches of the ancient trees. The rays of light settling on ferns and vegetation growing from the earth. The air smells fresh and clean. The ancient trees rise up high towards the sky, their roots anchoring deep into Mother Earth. 
Birds are singing, and you can hear the call of a buzzard flying high in the air. And then you see a deer with her fawn. She sees you, but she remains calm. Continue your walk. You can hear the sound of running water. You follow the sound and reach a small waterfall flowing into a small crystal clear pool. As the water splashes into the pool, you see the colours of the rainbow. Now feel yourself drawn to a particular tree where you decide to sit a while, watching the water cascade. You feel the energy from the tree. Take a deep breath and slowly exhale. You are connected with Mother Earth and nature. Feel safe and at peace. Then continue your walk, feeling re-energised and refreshed. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies and wherever you are right now. Surround us all in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. The Sanctuary Prayer Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power the disharmonies within me may be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with a divine healing purpose for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair who do not know the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. Harry Edwards Prayer May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness. Protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me, that I may be conscious of their presence and so receive guidance and inspiration. The Great Invocation From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let love, light and power restore the plan on earth. Now this is an angel, an angel poem written by Mary Jack. I am the stars twinkling at night, I am the moon glowing bright, 
I am the sunshine rising at dawn, giving you light and keeping you warm. I am the rainfall caressing your cheek, sending you rainbows to brighten your week. I am the wind drying your tears, blowing away troubles and smoothing your fears. I am the clouds, so look to the sky. Check out the shapes as I'm passing by. I am that butterfly hovering above, that feather, that robin, bringing you love. I am the songs and that music you hear, sending sweet memories and keeping you near. I am the flower that sends out its scent, I'm still around you, I never went. So, whenever you're feeling lonely or down, remember I'm with you. I'm always around. We now ask that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder at the sanctuary and in your own thoughts and written words receive healing for their highest good and include yourselves for some healing too. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. Also send healing for the animals of this world, on the land, the oceans of the air. So now, for a minute of silence whilst these healing energies are sent out to the world. May all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Our thanks and blessings for your help today in sending out the wonderful healing energies and to all the divine angelic realms and our friends in spirit. Thank you. So as I said, today's stories are taken from the book Spirit Stories for Children, that was written by Olive Burton in the 1950s. For those of you new to the Healing Minute, Olive and her husband George, for many years, were healers at the sanctuary with Harry. Some months ago, during one of Tracy's Healing Minutes, she showed a photo of the cover of a book, and I realised I had this book as a child. And luckily, I was able to purchase a second-hand copy. So here are two more stories from the book and it includes a child's prayer too. I believe the stories are relevant for adults as well as children, just as much today as in all those years ago. The stories are mainly about children and some adults who are in spirit and the first story is titled the young gardeners. John and Rosemary were walking one day in a beautiful garden which was tended by a man who truly loved his flowers. The flowers, in response to his loving care, flourished and shone with great beauty and amongst them was one that was outstanding because of its radiance. It was tall and of a beautiful blue that seemed to be sparkling alive like a rippling stream. 
The children were greatly attracted to this flower, particularly Rosemary, who said she would like to have one in her garden. It was then that the idea came to John. If he could be allowed to have one of these plants, how nice it would be to give it to Rosemary as a present. So he went alone to see the one in charge of the garden and made his request, which the gardener granted with pleasure. John was so happy to be able to give this lovely surprise to his little friend and Rosemary too was overjoyed to receive it. She put the plant in her small garden and tended it with care then patiently waited for it to grow and produce the beautiful flowers she had seen and admired so much. Little by little it grew and eventually became a fair-sized plant. But although Rosemary cared for it tenderly, it never grew to the size of the one she had first seen, and neither were there any blooms. Both Rosemary and John were naturally disappointed about this, and they could not understand why it should be so. As usual, they discussed their problems with one of the teachers, and she gave them the reason, which was really very simple. She explained that everything that one does in spirit life, whether it is m the making of an object, the creation of music or the growing of flowers, can only be done if it expresses the real desire of yourself, which comes from deep within. And whatever you achieve is the expression of yourself and is therefore part of you. The original flower, she said, was a product of someone else's love and inner desire and was therefore a part of him. Its radiant beauty is the expression of his thanks to God for all things. The children were able to understand this and they decided to go to the gardener and tell him of their experience. The gardener, sensing their disappointment that the flower had not grown as they expected, promised that he would now join them with their effort, combining his thoughts and love with theirs. Soon the plant began to respond and to develop rich foliage and then appeared and then appeared the flower buds, gradually opened into the blooms of great beauty and of scintillating blue. The children were happy at first to see the fulfilment of what they had hoped for but then they came to the, then came to them the feeling that the flowers did not blend with the others in their little garden, as if they were not at home there. They knew the reason for this was that they really belonged to the gardener, and so they asked him to take the plant back into his own garden. They had realised something that had not they had not thought of before, that you cannot take for yourself something from another that he has given of himself to create, for it is part of that person's life right, and there is no one, and that no one should take this away. Lovely story. And the second story from this book is the story of Elizabeth. She was a newcomer to the nurseries of heaven, Elizabeth, aged 10, who so far in her life had been able to have all that she wanted in material things was what it is usually known as a spoilt child. Naturally, at first, Elizabeth continued to expect to be the centre of attention and to have just what she asked for. And as it was considered better for her to learn gradually, the other children were told to give way to her at first. Then one day she was invited by John and Rosemary to see their garden and they showed it to her with great pride and affection, for their flowers meant a lot to them. But at once, as was her way, Elizabeth asked the other two if she would have the garden for her own. This rather startled the children, for they could not believe that everyone could expect to take their garden from them. They did not wish to be selfish, and they wanted to help Elizabeth but they were doubtful of what to do. So they asked their teacher and she suggested they should give Elizabeth half of their garden 
and keep the other half for themselves. They did this and the little girl was satisfied. But it soon became apparent that the, they, she only wanted something else to call her own because it pleased her to look at the beautiful flowers. She had not thought the flowers might need something from her. Consequently, very soon, they began to wilt and as Elizabeth gave no thought to them, it was not long before they all faded away. It was then that she sought out John and Rosemary, complaining and asking how they could explain why her flowers had faded whilst theirs remained so beautiful. They were in fact more lovely than before. Rosemary explained to her how flowers in the nurseries of heaven thrive on the love they receive and how they reflect the quality of that love. Seeing again their delightful garden, Elizabeth longed to have one like it, but after her experience of listening to what Rosemary said, she now had a different feeling and a different motive in her desire. So she was given the opportunity to start a garden of her own, and now, to her delight, the flowers grew and flourished, and as Elizabeth lost her selfish, selfish tendencies and learned to give rather than to take, so she gave herself to the flowers and they rewarded her with their beauty. And in this book is also a child's prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for all that I have been able to do and for the living care, loving care I have received. Help me please always to do right so that I shall never cause unhappiness to anyone. Please God, may those who are sick be comforted and healed by the healing angels, and may the children without mummies and daddies be specially loved and cared for. Amen. So thank you for listening today. Don't forget, Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary is here for you. Telephone us, send an email or a letter. Make an appointment if you want contact healing. But we can still send you distant healing, whether you, wherever you are, just let us know. You're welcome to walk around the woodland, visit the labyrinth, the cherry tree walk and view the beautiful, stunning surroundings. Don't forget, join Doreen this afternoon at the sanctuary if you can get there at two o'clock. And on Thursday the 28th at 2pm, Join John for another online guided meditation, which will both be on Facebook and Zoom. And then on the following Sunday, on the 31st of October, join Linda Demir for a guided meditation all the way from her home in California. And that also will be on Zoom and Facebook. Now, if you're able to visit the sanctuary on Saturday, the 13th of November, why not come and see us all at the Autumn Fair at the Sanctuary? So bye for now. Love, light and blessings to you all and take care. I'm going to finish today with some music by Medwin Goodall and it's from an al album called Earth Healer and the track is called Pathfinder.
wishing you all a peaceful day and a peaceful week. Take care everybody. Bye for now.